Bruce, it's commonly expected now that the universe is filled with hundreds of billions of uh, planets. Our own galaxy is going to have multiple tens of millions. Uh, Fermi asked the question, with all of these planets, if life is going to be emergent, as many people expect, where are they? Where is everybody? Where is everybody? Well, he got a Nobel Prize and was a highly regarded person. Um, and he couldn't answer the question, and you're asking it to me. <laughs> I, I don't think we know. And I think the fact that we haven't got a clue is just one symptom of our fundamental ignorance. My view of us is I'm a geologist. You know, we're only a few tens of thousands of years old as a speaking intellectual species. We're at the very beginning. We are very primitive. And I think it's a coming to terms with what that means is essential for dealing with questions like this. You shouldn't expect to know the answer. Well, but we do have the fact that there is no evidence of any artificiality in the universe which would be indicative of right. intelligent life. I mean, that, right. that is a fact. Everybody would right. agree with that. Uh, and you can make certain assumptions that... A, technologi a technologically adept species can make certain progress in a thousand years, maybe travel one light year. Or, uh, if we take ourselves from now, the progress we've made, and, and you make calculations. So at, at the, if there's any intelligent species and they have a desire to expand out of self-preservation, after 100 million years, 200 million years, they would populate the galaxy. And the galaxy is several billion years old, and the numbers would indicate that they should be there, but they're not. Right. And a very famous scientist addressed this. <laughs> Fermi said, where is everybody? And that's the right question. We don't know the answer. It's a puzzle. I wish I could give you a more interesting <laughs> speculation, but we don't know. Isn't it suggestive that, uh, that maybe we are alone? Uh, that's a big leap. Uh, you know, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence and all that. Again, remember I'm a geologist, and I look upon it as a very primitive organism, relatively. So the fact that we don't know things is hardly surprising. That's to be expected. And so I don't think it's wise to try to build a whole conjecture about something we don't understand. There's a lot of it. It's going to be that way for our whole lifetimes and for quite a long time. And from my point of view, is that's okay. We just get used to that, accept it, and some things we understand, some things we don't. Occasionally we get a breakthrough. That's great. It's just as human beings, it's real hard to accept that. That's right. It's very hard. Uh, being a scientist helps for most cases because we see so much we don't understand. But we do see cause and effect in everything we do understand. So it's easy to assume there must be cause and effect explanations for the things we don't understand. So we don't need to, and, and kind of reluctant to have miraculous explana explanations for things we don't understand. We're just not very smart. <laughs>